And good Wednesday afternoon, southwest Louisiana, and our neighbors over in southeast Louisiana. Let's take a look in that uh, current radar loop and surface uh, analysis here. And you can see stretched along the state and the region here, you see the dying cold front here. Uh, that'll dissipate. Uh, later today and it, it'll push a little further south uh, as the tape progresses but um, we do have some lingering sea fog down here uh, Jefferson County and uh, parts of southern uh, West Cameron down here and as such there is a uh, dense fog advisory in effect for those areas due to the dense sea fog now looking at uh, the bigger picture here, we'll zoom out and uh, I'm going to turn radar off here and go back and we'll uh, bring in here with the satellite loop here and Thank God we finally got the satellite integrated. Yes, uh, I've upgraded. Uh, the upgrade uh, came out and uh, big improvement. So now we have uh, our animated satellite loop here. And what you're looking at is the infrared. And uh, we'll zoom in a little bit here and you can see it. It's a slow progression there. But uh, it's only a one hour loop, but it gives you a general idea uh, of what we're seeing here. We've got a lot of moisture down here that's streaming in from the Pacific. And uh, what's going to happen uh, through the rest of the week and into the weekend and then into early next week is we're going to be uh, kind of in a little cycle here. And. Uh, a series of, of fronts and disturbances uh, work in uh, from west to east. Uh, that's going to set the stage uh, for what we're going to see here. And uh, high pressure, as you can see here, uh, as indicated by the blue H's, uh, that's going to build in. Uh, later this, today and this evening. That's going to usher in a return of, of Gulf moisture and that'll overrun uh, the boundary here <coughs> in the cooler shelf waters uh, with that warmer more moist air uh, coming in out of the southeast uh, from the Gulf. That'll set the stage for another round of uh, dense sea fog and also uh, working inland uh, and that this is probably going to continue through at least Friday uh, so don't be surprised if uh, dense fog advisories go up for each night uh, you know here out here on out uh, through Friday so uh, with that uh, the series of fronts and disturbances coming through. We're going to turn the satellite off here. Uh, we're going to bring in a precipitation forecast, the QPF as, as it's called. And right now, uh, the heaviest rain is going to be split basically across the central and northern part of the state. Uh, and it's from one to one and a half inches. Uh, with locally higher amounts up to three inches for any areas that, that train uh, or receive training uh, from the heavier uh, showers. Now, no severe weather is expected. Um, however, there, there's still some, some discrepancies and some spread and model guidance. Uh, parts of Mississippi. Uh, could see something here. Uh, let's see, Wednesday. 
probably early next week. Um, I'll highlight that area, basically in, in this area in here. So, and that's subject to change as well. Um, we'll have to take a look at that, but and continue to monitor that. But uh, right now, we're just going to focus on you know from here to the weekend, and as the systems begin to the flow begin begins to go zonal. Uh, You have a clear demarcation line or convergence line, as you can see here, uh, as delineated by the QPF. And again, generally, this is uh, basically a, an inch to one and a half, maybe one and three quarters, approaching two inches in, in these uh, red spots here and these darker purples here. Uh, so, and Again, yesterday I was looking at this, and the values were, were a bit higher uh, across uh, west central Mississippi along the I-20 corridor from Vicksburg through Jackson and those areas. Uh, <clears throat> so as we move forward and things become a little more defined, uh, the forecast will get better refined and uh any deviation uh, of these systems in the fronts um, could mean some of this heavy rainfall drifts further to the south, uh, or it could slide a little further to the north. So, <clears throat> regardless, um, we're not seeing a, a significant flooding type scenario. Uh, it can be a lot of soaking heavy rains at times. Uh, other than that, no thunder really expected, uh, no severe weather, at least for the for the near and midterms, uh, mid-level capping, basically keep a lid on things uh, from being anything worse than uh, what we're likely to see as far as uh, thunderstorm and, and severe weather development. So that's a good thing. Um, We'll zoom out here, and uh, one thing to note, uh, I'm going to switch modes here. Uh, let's see if we can do the, let's see, day two. We'll turn this off, and <coughs> let's go to day one. Okay, day two, and that will be for tomorrow. Uh, Storm uh, the Weather Prediction Center has issued a marginal risk for excessive rainfall, and that's in the five to ten percent range, uh, and basically along that convergence line. And uh, as denoted in the QPF, <coughs> which we'll bring out here, you can see it uh, through this area. So uh, again, folks up there, you know, kind of. Be on your guard there. Um, this continues for day three, and uh, we'll take a look at that again uh, later. <clears throat> but uh, suffice it to say, uh, that's to kind of, that's kind of to be expected uh, with this type of setup. And as long as we don't start getting higher. Uh, uh, threat levels, if you will, uh, from the WPC, the Weather Prediction Center, uh, on these rainfall risks, uh, things things should pretty much be fine. So it's just going to be a, a wet rest of, rest of the week and end of the weekend, uh, and then we're going to do it all over again next week. So um, <clears throat> we're getting into a rainy period. Uh, I will say... We're not done with the cold weather as of yet. However, it will feel like early spring out there. Uh, it kind of feels like it already. Uh, <clears throat> temperature here at home base is 68. Uh, humidity 73%, dew point 59. So it's fairly dry air um, out there for the moment. And what I'll do is I'll bring you back and uh, let's take a look at... Uh, <clears throat> 
Let's see, water vapor. So it's fairly dry air. Um, we're starting to see uh, moist air coming in out of the the uh, Pacific, Mexico, and into the uh, western Gulf of Mexico there. And this will eventually translate up. And you can see the dry air here out in the Gulf as well, <coughs> extending down in the Caribbean. You can see uh, where your jet stream is. That's really really dry air uh, running through there. So. And this is basically a, a, a zonal flow, if you will, generally from west to east. Uh, don't see a, any big trough dropping down uh, with this at the moment. <coughs> so, um, all in all, it, it's <coughs> going to be a fairly wet pattern coming up, uh, starting late tomorrow afternoon you see see some spotty showers and then uh, as we get into tomorrow night and through the rest of the week things you know really rain chances really ramp up 60 70 80 percent range so <clears throat> and that, that's across the board for pretty much everybody uh, and that's in addition to a uh, dense fog threat as well so that'll be the main threat is dense fog so bear that in mind uh, moving forward uh, as we move through into tomorrow morning and then Friday morning uh, as conditions uh, become more favorable for inland dense fog and we'll probably see some dense fog advisories uh, posted out there as well. Uh, we already have one here in Western Cameron in uh, southern Jefferson County there in Texas. Uh, that's in effect until 6 p.m. Uh, so if you're driving, uh, those of you that get out there and work, this will, this will be, you know, mid-morning fog as well. So uh, those of you that get up and leave before daylight or just after daylight uh, might want to plan to leave about 15 minutes or so earlier than normal give yourself that added added padding and time uh, drive a little slower use your low beams uh, <clears throat> use practical uh, defensive driving pay atten extra attention uh, some of this fog is going to be some pea soup type fog at t in, in certain areas uh, so f just be mindful of that everybody be safe and uh, use use good judgment and uh, you, you saw the radar of the satellite image just update there which is great we love it uh, I gotta give thanks to Paul Marv and his crew at uh, Weather Studio and Tempo Quest uh, you guys knocked it out of the park with this update uh, thanks guys we appreciate it this is why I promote y'all and uh, still a lot of uh, although a lot of new features have been added there's still more to come and uh, I will say with this update haven't had z I've had zero issues with it so far uh, everything is working perfectly from satellite uh, to our METARs um, we'll turn on surface temperatures here you can see no more issues with uh, our METARs not working and that was <coughs> all of the server uh, issues have, have been taken care of. And you see here at, at 2.16 this afternoon, these are your current temperatures across the state, across the region, really. And uh, you see you see the demarcation line here. You, you see some 40s over here in Texas, you know, here on the back side of the front. But you see the basic demarcation line here with the 50s. Uh, basically north Louisiana and well you, I guess you could call you know uh, Alexandria is an odd ball out odd man out here at 59 so see the little squiggly snake there um, and uh, take a look at dew points and probably need to find something better a, a better palette for the dew points eh. 
let's just do that. Let's see. Uh, that makes it a little easier to see there. So you can see uh, dew points are low, uh, which is good. Doesn't feel oppressive out there. Uh, and then humidity values, as you can see, uh, we'll put the uh, radar back in play here. And you see so there's some pretty high humidity values out there. Again, uh, not too bad here in, in Louisiana, but over in Texas, uh, well, Texas always goes big. So <laughs> uh, it is what it is over there for those folks. But uh, nevertheless, um, you know, I'm still figuring out shortcuts and the new layout because the UI changed with this update on some things. And uh, from what I've t been told uh, from Paul is that uh, Tropics update, uh, that's going to be his next uh, issue that he's going to be working on. So uh, hopefully by hurricane season, uh, we have things... Uh, a little bit better the cone of error and the forecast track will update as uh, as quickly as the uh, National Hurricane Center posts that data it'll be immediate into the software here so uh, no more 6 or 12 hour lag with any of that stuff and uh, we also have some uh, up upgrades to the models as well um, things we'll be looking at. Whoop, let me turn the tessellation off here. Hold on. There we go. So uh, a lot of good things are coming in with our uh, software that we use and uh, you know I, I've been a user of Weather Studio since almost from the very beginning and <coughs> uh, It's a far cry today from what it was uh, even five years ago, um, you know, it, ten years ago even. So uh, I think 20, 2011, 2012, started using this thing. And, you know, Paul, Paul has come a long way with the development of this, the, his entire team. Uh, you know, th these, these folks work very hard. And... <coughs> You know, NOAA likes to change things up without telling anybody about any any changes, and then things stop working, and everybody has to scramble. So they, even the TV stations have issues with it. So, <clears throat> you know, that's your government work for you. Uh, Probably won't get any better either uh, in the coming four years. So regardless, um, it is what it is. Those guys do their best. I do my best to uh, bring you, you know, more detailed information in addition to what's already out there and my thoughts and uh, what what not concerning, uh, you know, what we could be seeing. So again. Uh, those of you looking for snow down here don't think it's going to happen uh, you know you had it across uh, central parts of the state central and northern parts of the state and the uh, Mississippi it was oh so close this year um, so never say never I've seen it snow down here in March I've seen ice storms in February so if you go to the old Red Stick Storm Spotters page, uh, I, I left it up for educational and historical purposes. <clears throat> um, it's still out there. You can see ice storm is snow in, in February and March. So, you know, it's not out of the realm of possibility. You know, will it? Who, who knows? You know, at this point, you know, weather is still... A mystery even though forecasting it has come a long way mother nature tends to do what she wants despite all our forecast on what she 
may or may not do. So, you know, we're still holding out for some snow. Uh, I think it's unlikely. But you never say never. I think the better shot will be next winter, uh, as we'll be under El Nino, and be colder than average and wetter than average. And we all know what El Nino does. Uh, looking ahead to the spring of 2022, it's an El Nino year. Review your flood insurance policies. Make sure they're up to date. We're still going to have some spring flooding this year. It's, it's a every year cycle. And I go into that as we get in the late winter and start to move into early spring. You know, I, I start to raise awareness of that. And uh, we'll be entering our, our spring severe weather season here as well. Although it's been tempered pretty much due to La Nina, which is typical. But... Again, moving forward, um, spring severe weather season. Let's hope things, you know, stay tempered and uh, not too bad. And as far as rainfall, unless we get a very drastic anomaly take place, I don't foresee any issues this year. That's not to say that you shouldn't have your flood insurance policies updated, including backwater flooding, flash flooding, river flooding, et cetera, et cetera. Go over that with your agents and make sure you're fully covered. Um, you know, it's a smart thing to do. So with that, <laughs> I'm going to uh, go ahead and close it out here and appreciate you tuning in. Next segment will be uh, tomorrow. Uh, we'll take a look at uh, new rainfall projections. And if anything changes between now and tomorrow, uh, or we start to see some, some higher amounts being projected than what's out there now, and especially if that those higher amounts start to shift further south, I'll post an update on the uh, page and in the groups there, and uh, just so you're aware of it and can be ready. But with that, uh, I'm going to close it and appreciate you for tuning in. And if you're able, use one of the donation links below. Uh, it helps, uh, especially since I'm getting ready to. Uh, implement uh, the two new paid subscription services for uh, the global lightning and goes our satellite extended data uh, they're not cheap but I think that you deserve it so uh, you deserve every every extra bit of information that I can bring you so uh, Hit one of those links, uh, PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, uh, every little bit helps, and helps offset my expenses for it. So with that, thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you again later. Have a good day.